axolotls. These cute, funny-looking animals are more than just household pets and Minecraft mobs. They're actually critically endangered species that have evolved over a long period of time to possess these odd traits. Hi, I'm Matthew, and today let's take a closer look at the axolotl, or Ampistoma mexicanum, focusing on their ecosystem, unique adaptations to their environment, and how ongoing issues like climate change might affect their survival. You might not have guessed it, but axolotls are actually a type of salamander, most closely related to the tiger salamander. Salamanders as a whole evolved from tetrapods millions of years ago, and a phylogenetic tree can be seen here. But let's move to the present. The axolotl lives in freshwater lakes and canals near Mexico City. These lakes are over 2,000 meters above sea level and at a relatively cool temperature of 14 to 20 degrees Celsius. They're pretty small, with an average size of 9 inches, but don't let this distract you from the fact that they're vicious carnivores. They can and will eat everything that they see. In their habitat, this is usually mollusks, insects, and fish. It's not limited to these animals though. Axolotls are actually cannibalistic, meaning that they don't mind eating each other if the circumstances dictate. However, this is pretty rare, only happening if there are food shortages or overcrowding. Axolotls also have few natural predators, namely storks and herons. However, some invasive fish such as the Nile tilapia and Asian carp have been introduced by humans into their habitat, which is a major source of predation. But why do axolotls look so different compared to the salamanders that we're accustomed to seeing? The key is in the traits that they've evolved to survive better in their environment. The first trait is something that you might have heard of before, and that's their incredible regenerative abilities. Axolotls can regenerate their limbs, spinal cords, heart tissue, and even some parts of their brains without any permanent damage or scarring. It typically takes around a month or two for them to fully regenerate a lost limb. This trait evolved to give the axolotls a higher chance of survival in the event of injury and predation, and therefore more axolotls possessing this trait would survive and pass it down to the next generation, which means that over time the number of axolotls possessing this trait would increase. Another trait is something that's very easily observed, neoteny. This basically means that the axolotl doesn't grow up, keeping the features from its juvenile stage. These include their gills and dorsal fin, allowing them to live underwater their whole lives. But why would they want to stay underwater? Well, predation and environmental conditions have driven the axolotl to evolve in this way. There's already lots of prey in the water, and the axolotl has the added bonus of avoiding predation and competition from terrestrial animals, like the aforementioned storks and herons. Also, low temperatures and low oxygen levels promote neoteny, which is perfect for the cool, high-altitude environment that the axolotl lives in. But this environment is pretty harsh. How would axolotls survive easier here? The answer lies in their increased hemoglobin levels, which are higher than other amphibians. Studies showed that the axolotl's hemoglobin concentration is around 11 to 17 grams per deciliter, which is a lot higher than the closely related tiger salamander's concentration of 2 grams per deciliter. This means that they can carry a lot more oxygen in their blood, which is useful because of both the aquatic nature and the high altitude of their habitat. These living conditions also promote neoteny as I said earlier, which is why the increased hemoglobin is needed in order to ensure a higher chance at survival. But what happens when these conditions are subject to permanent change? How would that affect the axolotl population? Human impact and climate change are two factors that heavily contribute to the axolotl's critical endangerment. As I said before, humans have introduced invasive fish to the axolotl's natural habitat, but they've also overfished the axolotls as they're considered a delicacy in Mexico. But possibly the most harmful factor was the rapid development of Mexico City. Many lakes around the area were drained to promote urban development, and this led to increased pollution which would have made even more areas inhospitable. The increased predation and habitat loss are all a direct result of human activity. Another factor is climate change, an ongoing issue that's growing increasingly more important by the day. I've identified two possible ways axolotls might be affected by the steady increase of water temperatures caused by climate change. The first is extinction. There are a couple of factors that could lead to extinction, all induced by climate change. First, the invasive fish that prey on axolotls thrive at slightly higher temperatures than the axolotl would like, at around 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. The ever-increasing water temperatures would slowly start to favor the Nile tilapia and Asian carp more than the axolotl. This will accelerate the growth of the invasive fish, which will then reduce the axolotl population by a lot as there are more fish to prey on them. Axolotls also need cold waters to reproduce, preferring to do so in the late winter or early spring. Climate change will shorten this window of reproduction, reducing the amount of offspring and therefore the population. Climate change doesn't just affect water temperature though, as it causes more unpredictable changes in the weather such as drought or flooding. 
axolotls generally live in stable conditions, and these extreme weather changes would render their regenerative properties basically useless as these aren't things that you can fix by regeneration, and their population would decline as one of their defense mechanisms is essentially invalidated. All of these effects of climate change could be enough to drive the axolotl to extinction, perhaps within a century. However, let's look at it from a more positive lens. Although this outcome is less likely, climate change could cause the axolotl to speciate. The higher water temperatures might not be able to support neoteny anymore, which might cause the axolotl to grow up and develop traits more suited to terrestrial living, such as losing their gills and developing stronger lungs, something that can be seen in other species of salamander. The axolotl would also want to avoid the thriving populations of its predators such as the tilapia and carp, and therefore axolotls with traits suited for terrestrial living would be more favored for survival. Over centuries, the axolotl might eventually evolve to become terrestrial. The axolotl is an amazing animal. We looked at the unique adaptations that it's made to survive better in its environment and how it might further adapt in the face of climate change. Thank you for watching.